the answering question number 16 from the January 2020 Core Mathematics C12 International A-Level at Excel paper. And this question is also a question that I've included in my endotopic worksheet for my P1 material from um, the Cambridge worksheet number 10 on trigonometry. And this question here actually is a mixture between um, the topic of trigonometry and also sequences and series. So we're told here that the first three terms of a geometric sequence are 2 sine theta, 1 plus cosine theta, and 4 sine theta. And we have to show that 9 cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine theta minus 7 equals 0. So now, we have here a geometric sequence. A geometric sequence. Now we know that geometric sequences are such that we have a common um, ratio. Okay, that if you divide a term by the term before it, it will give you the same ratio for any pair of terms. So for example, if I divide the second term by the first term, it should give me the same ratio as the third term by the second term. So, you know, basically we, we must multiply by the same ratio each time to get to the next term. The same number we multiply by each time to get to the next term. So we can easily set up here a little equation for us to be able to form this equation that they asked. We can say that the third term divided by the second term, so 4 sine theta divided by 1 plus cosine theta is going to give me exactly the same ratio as the second term divided by the first term. So 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2 sine theta. And you see both of those are equal to the common ratio. Okay, so therefore we can say, if we cross multiply, that 4 sine theta times 2 sine theta, which is 8 sine squared theta, is equal to 1 plus cosine theta, cosine theta, the whole of that squared. So this gives us 8 sine squared theta equals, now when you square this bracket, you're going to square the first term, you're going to multiply these two terms together and then double that, so you have 2 times cosine theta, and then you're going to square the last terms, you're going to get cosine squared theta. Now, if I look at what I have to show, what we have to show, as we can see, only contains terms with cosine squared theta and cosine theta. There's no sine theta, no sine squared theta in that, right? So what I want to do is I want to keep all of these in terms of cosine theta. So my sine squared theta, I can change by using our identity, which we should know, that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of that same angle equals 1. So if I can rewrite this with sine squared of the angle as a subject, I have the sine squared of the angle is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of the same angle. So what I can do here is I can replace the sine squared theta with 1 minus cosine squared of that same angle theta, and that will be you know, the same thing. All right? So that gives me 1. On the other side, I don't have to change any of these because they're all in terms of what we need cosine and cosine squared thetas. So now the whole thing is in terms of cosine squared theta and cosine theta. So hopefully if we did everything correct, it should simplify to this. So let's expand the bracket here. So we have 8 minus 8 cosine squared theta equals 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. So if I bring all the terms on one side and make it say equals 0, I can see I've got minus 8 cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. So I'll write 0 on this side. I'll put here 8 cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And I've got on this side plus 2 cosine theta. And um, it's just that. And I've got plus 1 minus 8. Okay, 1 minus 8. So we're left now with 8 cosine squared theta. Uh, sorry, 8... That's 9 cosine squared theta. So I'll write everything on one side. 9 cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine theta minus 7 equals 0. And that's exactly what we had to show. Okay, so by, by basically using the fact that these are in geometric sequence, or this is a geometric sequence, we can, you know, say the common ratio 
okay, is given by a term divided by the one before it. So we can form this equation here. And when we simplify this, we can change the sine squareds into cosine squared such that we can end up with something like we have to show. And we've got it, simple as that. Then it says, given that theta is acute, find the exact value of cosine theta. So in this question here, they're telling us to find the exact value of cosine theta. All right, they're not telling us to actually find the angle itself, just the cosine of the angle, and they told us it's an acute angle. All right, so we have to first, of course, solve this equation to find the values of cosine theta. So we start with our equation, which even if we couldn't form it, we can use what they gave us, 9 cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine theta minus 7 equals 0. Now, to solve this equation, um, to make things look familiar, what we could do is we could say let x equals cosine theta. Okay, so we can call this 9x squared plus 2x minus 7 equals 0. And now we can factorize and solve this equation. Now, we can factorize by splitting up the middle term by just using, you know, kind of like trial and error and trying to figure out what the, 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 the values are. I personally like to use this, this method of splitting the middle term, which is, some people call it the window method. Okay, so I take the top left corner to be, I write the 9x squared, I write the first and the last term, the squared and the constant, 9x squared and minus 7. Then I think, to, then I basically multiply these two together, that gives me minus 63, x squared. So I needed to find a product of two numbers that will go here. The two numbers must multiply to give me negative 63x squared, the same as that product. But the sum of those two numbers must be plus 2x. Okay, so if we think about the numbers that gives us 63 and difference of 2, well, it's, it's actually 9 and 7, the same as these two. So that would work. So I can put here, for example, um, it would be positive 9x and minus 7x. That's going to give me a product of um, negative 63x squared and a difference of 2. So that's that's quite easy there. So the common factor of these two terms I'm going to write up here, which is going to be just x. Okay, the common factor of... That's 9x, sorry. Common factor of these two. Let me just uh, fix that. Okay, it's 9x. It's common of these two. 9x times x is 9x squared. 9x times plus 1 is 9x. And x times... Minus 7 is minus 7x. So this becomes 9x minus 7 times x plus 1 equals 0. So from this, you can say x equals negative 7 over 9 and x <coughs> equals negative 1. Remember, we said let x equals cosine theta. That means cosine theta is equal to negative 7 over 9 and um, cosine theta is equal to one okay so sorry what am i talking about here that's a mistake there sorry about that that means 9x equals 7 which in case in that case x equals 7 over 9 and x plus 1 equals 0 in which case x equals negative 1 sorry just had a brain freeze there so we have cosine there therefore cosine theta equals 7 over 9 or cosine theta equals negative 1. Now, we are told that theta is acute. Okay, now the ratio, the, 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 the value of the ratio of a, an acute angle for sine, cosine, and tangent will be, all, will be positive if it's an acute angle, because all acute angles will be in this first quadrant. Okay, so the cosine of all three ratios are positive here. All right? So this won't be an acute angle. If the cosine theta equals negative 1, it's not going to be an acute angle, right? It's going to be basically negative 270. Okay, if you think about the cosine curve, it goes like this. So negative 180, not 270, negative 180. Okay, so it's going to be over here, it's going to be minus 1, right? So that's not an acute angle. Acute angles, the ratio is always positive. Okay, so for sure... If, um, if theta is an acute angle, the cosine of theta will give us a positive value. So we know, therefore, cosine theta must equal 7 over 9. Okay? All right? Cosine theta is equal to 7 over 9. It's positive in the first quadrant. Q angles will have a positive value for the cosine, sine, and tan in the first quadrant. Okay? So that's the answer to part B. So there's part A and part B done. And now for part C. 
So it says, hence find in its simplest form the exact value of the first term of the sequence and the common ratio of the sequence. Okay, so we know that cosine theta is equal to 7 over 9. All right, so we need to find the first term of the sequence, which is 2 sine theta. So the first term of the sequence is 2 sine theta. Now, if we know what cosine theta is, we can find what sine theta is in two different ways. Okay, and I'll show you both ways. All right, so what we could do, one of the things we could do is we could draw a right angle triangle. Okay, this is one way of doing it. And as it's, as it's in the first quadrant, I'll draw it like this. So this is in the first quadrant. Okay, so I'll draw it like this just to... So I'm drawing the, the right angle triangle in the first quadrant. This is theta. Okay, this is a right angle. The cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And therefore, this is going to be our um, opposite side. Okay, so let me just call this y. All right, we can say that the you know that the value of y is going to be the square root of the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of the shorter side so y is equal to the square root of 81 minus 49 so we have 81 minus 49 okay so that's the square root of 32 okay which is 4 root 2 so that's the square root of 32 which is equal to 4 root 2 so this side is equal to 4 root 2 so we can say that sine theta, so A is, sorry, A is 2 sine theta. So therefore, sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 4 root 2 over 9. Therefore, we can say 2 sine theta is going to be 2 times 4 root 2 over 9, which is 8 root 2 over 9. And it's going to be positive, of course, because it's in, in the first quadrant. So we can say, therefore, the first term is 8 root 2 over 9 and then it says to find the common ratio of the sequence so we know that the common ratio is um, we can say 4 sine theta divided by 1 plus cosine theta or we can even use 1 plus cosine theta over 2 sine theta it doesn't matter which way you use which one you use okay so I'll use 4 sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta okay so you have 4 times um, sine theta so it's going to be twice this so 4 sine theta is going to be twice this so it's going to be 2 times 8 root 2 over 9 divided by 1 plus cosine theta and cosine theta as we said was 7 over 9 okay cosine theta is 7 over 9 okay so this would give us the value of the common ratio so the common ratio is that's going to be 16 root 2 over 9 divided by that's going to be uh, 16 over 9 okay because you have 9 over 9 plus 7 over 9 that's going to be 16 root 2 over 9 times 9 over 16 9 cancels with the 9 16 cancels with 16 you're left with root 2 so the common ratio is equal to root 2 okay so we found the first term and we found the common ratio okay so there's the answer to this question. Okay, I hope that was clear. And um, is there anything else to this question? I don't think so. No, that's it. Okay, that's the answer to the question. So this question involved a bit of geometric series and a bit of trigonometry. Uh, I mentioned there's another way to find the value of um, sine theta, if we know cosine theta, and that's basically using the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one so we can say sine squared theta plus and we have seven over nine squared equals one so we can say sine squared theta equals one minus and that's going to be 49 over 81 okay and 49 over 81 will give us 32 over 81 okay so you end up with sine squared theta oops sine squared theta equals 32 over 81 so therefore sine of theta will be the square root of all of that the square root of 39 over 81 which is basically um going to be 4 root 2 over 9 okay if you root, root 32 is 4 root 2 and root 81 is 9 so we end up with sine theta equals 
4 root 2 over 9. Okay, and, and that's exactly what we said, 4 root 2 over 9. So you can use the identity or you can use the triangle to find the value of sine theta or cosine theta, whatever you need. In this case, we only need sine theta. And we know it's positive because it's in the first quadrant. Okay, so that completes this question. Um, I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from um, this worksheet, endotopic worksheet number 10 from my Cambridge collection can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from trigonometry in general from, from Edexcel uh, papers can be found over here and from Cambridge papers can be found over there. Um, if you would like to watch other videos um, about you know, from um, other syllabi or GCSE or whatever. You can see what I have by watching the video that will um, be linked on the top of the page over here. The card takes you to videos showing you how to navigate my channel um, to find what you want efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.